Hello everyone, and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today we will be taking a look at every single LEGO Super Mario set to be released in the summer of 2020. This theme in its first wave will be getting a total of 18 sets, which I think might be one of the largest starting waves for any license LEGO's ever done. So, incredibly ambitious. All of these sets will release worldwide on August 1st, 2020. And without any more further ado, let's begin. Starting with the most important, essential set for the entire line, and the set that was revealed first. So, most of the sets in this video were revealed very recently. This one's been known for quite a while. This is the Adventures with Mario Starter Course, set number 71360. This set will include 231 pieces in retail for about $60, and while that price may at first seem absolutely atrocious, there's a reason it's so expensive. Or, well, two reasons. Number one, because Nintendo wanted this game to cost the same amount as the average Nintendo Switch game, which... Fine, okay. However, the real reason is because this set comes with LEGO Super Mario. And you can see him right there at the top of the box image. And... There's a very good chance that if you haven't been living under a rock for the past several months, you already know all about LEGO Mario. But, just in case you don't, LEGO Super Mario is a very advanced LEGO piece. Or, well, he's a set of pieces, but specifically the core of him, where he has screens built into his eyes, mouth, and his torso which you can see are currently displaying flames. He has a color scanner in his bottom, which can scan certain colors of Lego pieces to tell what terrain he's standing on. In this case, red for lava, but also blue for water, green for grass, and yellow for sand. He can also scan certain specially designed tiles, to activate certain mechanics within the game, such as collecting power-ups, defeating enemies, and collecting coins. And he has a gyroscope, so, so you'll be able to shake him around. If he collides with something, he'll be knocked unconscious for a few seconds. And of course, he does make noises and speak. He is voiced by Charles Martinet, who's voiced Mario ever since Mario 64 back in 1996. And yeah, if you can't tell how he's built up, the primary core of Mario, which is his head minus the ears, his hair, and everything red you see with his torso, including his arms, as well as his gloves, that's all one piece with all of the technology built in. Then you add on one by one tiles for the ears. The overalls and shoes are, as, are one piece with the buttons being added on. And then you have his iconic hat, which is also a removable element. Moving on to the rest of the starter course, though. Again, this set is the starter pack. So as builds go, it is one of the less interesting of the line, but that's fully intentional, since this set isn't designed to be some big major playset based on a specific thing. The idea is that you get Mario, you get a couple other characters, and you get everything you need to start building a course. Starting with, at the left we have the pipe, and at the right we have the flagpole, and those, aside from Mario, are the two most important elements of the LEGO Mario line as those are your start point and end point for your course. Because, of course, the whole point of the line is to get different sets to build your ultimate LEGO Super Mario course to play through and collect as many coins as possible in as quick a time as possible. And so you have those, which are your start point and end point. You have to have those attached to any course or else 
well, you won't be able to start and end it. Taking a look at the figures included, standing in the lava section, there is a Goomba, which I think is designed quite well for the size. It has a sticker on top, and all of those parts with the codes are stickers, but they are pre-applied at the factory. To my knowledge, none of the sets have any stickers that you, the consumer, have to put on yourself. They're all pre- everything is either a printed detail, or, in the case of those pieces, pre-applied stickers when you get the set. That Goomba figure does come in several other sets, but, well, I mean, it's a Goomba. It's fairly massable, and all you do with Mario is you jump on the Goomba's head to collect one coin. Our other figure is Bowser Jr., who is exclusive. This is the only set to include Bowser Jr., and I think he has a pretty nice build. Definitely fairly blocky, as most of these characters are, but I like that, since it helps them to fit in with the LEGO style, as well as get, giving them a sort of retro 8-bit style of feel, although that is a bit less so with Bowser Jr., since he didn't come around until the GameCube era. But he has several great new printed pieces, as well as some newly molded ones, including his two by th a 2x3 two piece featuring his feet, which is similar to one we see on the Goomba that's a 2x2 two two piece for the smaller creatures. He has a printed bib. His mouth is a 2x4 tile with round edges. And his shell, you can't get a good look at it in this picture, but it is a brand new piece with some spikes molded on, and a 2x2 two two gap in the center where you can place on a tile that has a sticker where if you jump on him five times, you'll get a whole bunch of coins. Other than that, the set includes a cloud platform that you can put Mario on and fly him around to gain coins. Then you have just a bunch of terrain areas. You have several just grassland Hills, I guess? I mean, you can't really call them pillars, and yeah, hills in Mario kind of look like that sometimes, so yeah, so you have several hills, you have a cloud, Mario is currently standing on a moving platform, where as you stand him on that, he'll gain coins as you move him around, but since there aren't any studs, it he will not stay on for long, so you have to be careful or he'll fall off, and if he falls off, he will get stunned and not be able to collect any coins for a few seconds. You can also see a question mark block, and if you jump on that, you'll get a random bonus. And Bowser Jr. stands atop a small fortress design. And, yeah, that's really all there is for this set. Again, the builds are nice, but they're mainly just to get you started. The main point of this whole set is LEGO Mario. So, let's move on to some other sets that have a bit more meat to the builds. Starting with my personal favorite of the line, set number 71362, the Guarded Fortress. This set includes 468 pieces and will retail for about $50, and this set, in my opinion, is just fantastic. If you can't tell, the main build is for the Guarded Fortress itself, which is based on the small castle Mario enters at the end of every level in the original Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And that's just very well designed. And this set is one of the more dynamic of the series, since it has some dynamic angles to those side sections, where on the left we have a hill area where you can have a catapult to knock off one of your enemies, and on the right, you have an area with a piranha plant who can lunge out of the pillar to attack Mario. And Mario can hit a lever to knock him right back into his pipe. You also get a bob and a Koopa Troopa in the set. And in the middle, you have a lava path going up to a POW block, which, when pressed, will knock open the door to the fortress. You also have the flagpole, which can be set up just by jumping on it. And just looking at this from a different angle, 
Again, this set just looks very complete in my opinion. The castle at the back is very well done, and I love how, how you just have the Unikitty cloud pieces. That just looks so good in my opinion, and very cartoony, very video gamey. The POW block is nice. I'm not sure what happens when with the scanner when you step on it, but it is connected to a Technic piece that I believe when you smash it down, it will blow open the door to the fortress. Aside from that, you the Koopa Troopa I think looks very nice with some printed pieces. The Babom also is very well done, even if he is extremely blocky. And the Piranha Plant is a very good build, and I like the feature where it can come in and out of the pipe. Yeah, there isn't that much to say about this set, and actually a good amount of them. It's just that I think it looks very complete. It looks very authentic to the series. I like the characters, but it's a very simple set. And it looks like one that'll be very fun to play with the Lego Mario figure. So yeah, very excited for this one. Moving to something a bit cheaper, we have set number 71363, the Desert Pokey. This set will include 180 pieces and cost about $20, and it will include two characters, those being the Pokey itself, as well as a Monty Mole. And the Pokey is exclusive to this set, the Monty Mole will come in another... But you can see that the main feature is you have this platform with a hammer attached where you can just ha put Mario in there and swing the hammer to knock out the, the parts of the pokey. Which I think is a pretty creative way of incorporating how the pokey works in the game because obviously this is not exactly how things go in Super Mario Brothers, but it's a fun play design. And you have some nice cacti features on each side of the sort of pillar that you attach the pokey into. The Monty Mole, I think, looks very cute. If you jump on his head, you will get a single coin. I imagine that that goes the same for all of the segments of the pokey. Yeah, you have a nice cactus, and yeah, I think this build just looks very good. If I had one complaint, is that I... I think the hammer looks quite bland. I, I don't know. I feel so if they'd used brown pieces for that instead, it would have just looked a lot better. Plus, then it would have been a nice callback to the original hammer from Donkey Kong. But that's really just nitpicking. This is a very cute $20 set, and I'm excited to get my hands on it. Next, we have set number 71364, Whomp's Lava Trouble. This set will, will be 133 pieces for 20 bucks, and it will include figures of a Whomp, who is exclusive to this set, a Potabo, the little fireball, as well as a blank Koopa shell. Which is nice to get in a $20 set, since this will be the cheapest way to get that shell piece in the standard green coloration. Whomp, I think, is a fantastically done character, one of my favorites in this line. Like, he's very simple, but he is extremely just... He looks like he, he could be printed out from Mario 64, and there's also the bonus where, while he does fit well with this line, he also would scale pretty well with just a minifigure scale Mario, so if they ever come out with minifigures for this series, you could just use this Whomp with that with the minifigures, and it would work perfectly fine. In fact, it might scale a bit better, since the this guy won't be that huge against LEGO Mario, but he will absolutely tower over a minifigure Mario. The Potobo is a nice inclusion for this Bowser's Castle-themed set, but the Potobo comes in, I believe, every set with a lava biome, so nothing too interesting there. You get another instance of the POW block, as well as a blank Koopa shell, and the main play feature of the set is just that you have a moving platform, 
where you just have Mario stand on top and move him back and forth. As you move him, he'll get coined, but obviously, if you're not careful, he'll fall off and get stunned. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, also, it looks as though the platform's off to the right where the Koopa shell is attached. It looks as though that can rotate around, but I can't really see a major reason for that. But overall, I think the build of the set is a little underwhelming for 20 bucks, but I feel as though the inclusion of Whomp, as well as the Koopa Shell, definitely do make up for that. And this is another set that I am excited to get when it comes out. I really like it. Yeah. Next set is probably my least favorite of this line. It is set number 71365, the Piranha Plant Power Slide. It will include 217 pieces, and it will cost about $30. And for characters, you get a Goomba, a Koopa Troopa, and a pair of Piranha Plants. And firstly, I think that that's kind of an instant issue, where none of the characters in this set are unique. The Goomba is the very common variant that comes in several sets, including the starter kit. The Koopa Troopa also comes in the Guarded Fortress, as do more interesting versions of the Piranha Plant, that, again, the version in that set has the great play feature, whereas with this, they're just kind of attached onto this minecart system. And the whole idea with this is you set Mario down in the minecart, and you tilt him back and forth. And as you do, he'll get coins, but obviously if he collides with the Piranha Plants, he will be stunned. And I believe this is trying to replicate how in New Super Mario Bros. for the Wii, there were the platforms where you would have to tilt the Wii remote side to side to get Mario to to get the platform to move, so like to get you positioned better. And they did challenges where you had where you had like eight red coins set up around those platforms. So you had to maneuver them to get all eight. And yeah, so like it's an interesting idea, but. In execution, I it doesn't seem that fun to me. And the rest of the bill, like, this feels like another $20 set in terms of the size to me. And because, like, outside of that section with the tracks, everything is just extremely simple. Um, honestly, I think less that I think the most interesting thing in this set is that this is the cheapest way to get the time block, and that's the teal block off to the right, and what that does is it adds 30 seconds to your timer. Mario starts out each course with only 60 seconds to complete it in, and hitting the time block adds an extra 30, so it will be quintessential in creating longer courses. And, yeah, so I think that that's the most interesting thing here, in my opinion. It does come in a couple other sets, but it's not too common. So I hope that they will introduce it in more sets in a second wave when that comes out, presumably in 2021. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, like, if you want more Goombas and Koopas, and if you like the play feature, this is a fine set. It's a good set. It's just definitely not for me. But my favorite parts are that time block, as well as I like getting the train track pieces in green. The roller coaster track, rather. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Next set is the Boomer Bill Barrage. This is set number 71366. It comes with 132 pieces and will retail for about $30. And, who oh boy, like the Piranha Plant set I feel is rather overpriced, but like I could see that going for 25 this set is such a $20 set. You get a pair of, ahem, Bonsai Bills. I don't know why LEGO's calling them Boomer Bills. These are, these have been called Bonsai Bills since Super Mario World in 1991. Um, all I can think is that because Bonsai was, is commonly known in the U.S. as a common war cry used by Japanese suicide pilots during the Second World War... Maybe they didn't want to put that in a put that name in a Lego set, but I don't know. Like if you didn't want to do that, I just call it like the Bullet Bill Barrage or something. Like just making up a new name seems kind of odd to me. 
So you get those, you get the fantastic Shy Guy, who's my favorite thing in the set, and this is also one of the cheaper ways to get a mushroom. Not the cheapest way, but this is the cheapest boxed way to get a mushroom. And the whole gimmick with this set is that you have Mario on the spinning platform, and as you spin it, the gears on each side will collide with the gears on the Boomer Bill section. So as you put Mario around, those will spin around and try to knock him off. So the go And you have two platforms. One studded and one tiled. The tiled one will give you more coins, but both will do the trick. And you just have to move Mario around to the other side without getting knocked down by the bills. And it's an interesting play feature, although it's not one I would really associate with these guys, since they're projectiles. When I think of the bullet bill or the bonsai bill, I think of them being shot out of cannons, like in Mario 3 and Mario World. And also I specifically think of the side quest in the Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story RPG from back in the day. That, that was a game I love to play on the NES. So I definitely remember that stuff, and yeah, so I think it's weird that they don't include any sort of canon. Like, I think the idea of what we have here with the swinging feature is interesting, but I feel as though if they'd included, like, a side build of just, like, a cannon to, sh to launch one of these guys out of, that would have taken up enough pieces to where maybe I could have seen this at 30 bucks. but as it is, this is a $20 set with a Shy Guy. Am I gonna get it? Yeah, because a shy guy, but other than that, like, the bills also are a bit weird, because all of the characters in this line have the very m much more blocky aesthetic to give them the Lego feel, whereas these guys are just fully smooth, the bills, so that's kind of odd, but yeah, so another mushroom is great, the shy guy is incredible, yeah, I'm gonna get this one, but it's definitely not gonna be a day one purchase. Moving on to a set that it might be, in fact it probably will, it is set number 71367, Mario's House and Yoshi. The set will include 205 pieces and cost about 30 bucks, and despite it having less pieces than the Piranha Plant Power Slide, I think this of the three $30 sets is by far the one that feels the most worth it. It includes two characters, Yoshi and an exclusive surprised Goomba, and the build is Mario's House, which takes inspiration from the Paper Mario series, although it's definitely not an exact match. You also get a hammock, where if you put Mario in that, he will sleep. And if you stand him on the tile next to Yoshi, he will greet Yoshi and gain some coins. Yeah, there isn't that much to say about this at um, The interior of the house is entirely empty, which is a little unfortunate, but then again, you couldn't really fit Lego Mario inside of the house, so that would be something that would be just for, again, like the Thwomp set. If they ever released minifigures, you could use this house with those, but with the, with, but with the scale of the Mario line, this is just a display piece for the house. But hidden in the roof, there is a star block, which is how they're doing stars. Um, I kind of wish maybe there was a, at least once it included a physical design, using like the Lego Movie 2 star piece with a special face print. But instead, we just get a blue block with a star printed on it, which will give Mario the star ability, and that's fine. The hammock, I think, is a very cute inclusion. Yeah. You also get a printed sign. This is there isn't much else to say. This is a very cute set. For 30 bucks, I think it's one of the most worth it sets of the line. It's probably one of my favorites. It's probably uh the Guarded Fortress is my favorite. This is my second favorite. I love this set. Very likely going to be a quick purchase on my part. Moving up to something quite a bit more expensive, we have set number 71368, Toad's Treasure Hunt. This will include 464 pieces and cost about 70 bucks, and while it is an abysmal price-to-part ratio, 
that is actually a pretty good price to volume of stuff ratio in my opinion because this it comes with a whole lot of things to start with you get five figures those being toad toadette a pair of cheap cheeps and the standard goomba toad and toadette are both exclusive to this set and both done very nicely Obviously, they use the mushroom cap piece in their respective colors and designs. They both have exclusive printed faces and torsos, and I think it's kind of interesting that they're brick-built for the bodies when they probably could have at about, and it would have been about the same size if they'd used the new torso pieces they designed for the Minions sets from earlier this year. They were supposed to go along with Minions 2, but that movie got delayed until next year, so we kind of just have a couple LEGO Minion sets now for no reason. But anyway, so, but they are brick-built, and they look good. The Cheap Cheeps I really like, specifically because they have a brand new wing piece, which is completely unnecessary, and I think they would have worked perfectly well if they just used the standard Chima wing piece. Or, well, the one that was introduced in Chima. Obviously now it's far outstripped that theme. But... I think, but I'm really glad to get the new one, just for variety. It's a smaller piece. It's a floofier piece. I really like it. As for the build, you, there's a lot here. Firstly, you get three Toad Houses, which I love. These are very much new Super Mario Brothers inspired. You have a yellow one and a lavender one, as well as the very large red one in the middle. None of these have any interiors, which is to be expected, although I think it would have been nice if in the large one they would have included maybe just like a mystery box. Just, just you know, pay a bit of homage to how in Mario 3 you had the Toad House minigames. And I suppose they also do that in the new Super Mario games as well. But anyway, they each have a single white spot, and each of the three houses has a different mechanic. On the right, at Toadette's, Mario can stand on a tile to greet her and gain some to coins. The same goes for the red house with Toad, but at the yellow house, there is actually a play feature to reveal a hidden treasure box. And the set includes three treasure boxes, hence why it's called Toad's Treasure Hunt, and collecting one of the any one of them gets a small amount of coins, but if you get all three, you get a very large coin payout. So that's box number one. Moving away from that, you have a couple of moving platforms. One being at a bridge, similar to the one in the Whomp set, and the other being a spinning platform, similar to what we saw in the starter course. Moving on, we have a bridge with a pair of swinging cheap cheeps, and the idea with those is not as an obstacle. Rather, the idea is to try and jump on them with Mario, as every hit you get on earns you one coin. But obviously, since they're spinning around, that will be a bit of a difficult hit to make. So, have fun. Next to that, you can also see box number two, which will be hidden inside of that large treasure chest, and you can pop out the box just by smacking that lever. Finally, you have a Goomba tree, using the Unikitty Cloud pieces in green, which is a really nice recolor. And that third piece is just hidden by some leaves. Hit the gray Technic beam to reveal it. Yeah, this set has is a lot going for it, some great figures, some great specialized features for the game. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing is just the Toad Houses, but I think that the play features are very fun, a very unique thing to add to your course, and yeah, this is another set that I am very excited for when it comes out. Next up, we have the Big Boy, set number 71369, Bowser's Castle Boss Battle. The set will include 1,010 pieces and cost $100, and it includes four characters, those being Bowser, King Koopa himself, so obviously great to get, as well as Dry Bones, a Boo, and both of those are exclusive, as well as another Potabo. And this set looks great. 
First off, just starting with Lego Bowser, he's incredible. Probably the best character build in any of these sets. Like, firstly, it's kind of interesting because almost all of these figures rely in some way off of the off of brand new pieces designed just for them. Bowser, on the other hand, aside from a large base for his shell, which I believe is new, I'm pretty sure that everything else for this figure is built just using existing parts. Like, his whole face, like, you have a couple prints, but there aren't any new pieces there. Those, these, those are all just existing classic parts put together in creative ways, and he just looks incredible. His mouth has a great amount of depth. I don't have a good picture of his shell, but it's very detailed, and all the designs on the back are brick-built, rather than molded like the rest of the characters. The Dry Bones is a nice Koopa variant. The Boo uh, is one of my least favorite characters, just because I don't get why it's just a solid cube. I think it would have looked a lot better if they'd done something like what they did with, say, the bob where it's still cube-like, but at the very least you have the tiles jutting out to give it a somewhat rounded appearance if you squint. And also the boo's a bit big. Like, I think if they just done it at the size of the bob it would have been a, been a lot better. So that's the biggest complaint with this set for me. But for the castle itself, it's really cool. So at the front, you have a catapult to launch a potabo at Mario to knock him off. I can't really think of a practical application for that, since you're controlling Mario and the core, so I don't know why you'd want to knock Mario off, but you certainly can. Then you have a platform leading up to the main wall, which has some nicely designed brickwork, as well as some turrets, and the lava spillage looks quite nice. We'll get to the main play feature in the center in a minute, but you do have a pair of towers, one on each side, which have more lava spillage, as well as some moving platforms to spin Mario around on with the enemies attached. Then, for the play features, you can see that behind Bowser we have this double-scaled Bowser statue that is just very good-looking. I always love when LEGO takes things that are LEGO and scales them up. So, uh, probably the best example is the brick figs that they've done for characters like Giant Man and, uh, most recently, Grop from Harry Potter, where, the, where it's a minifigure sized up to three times the normal scale. This is a le the Lego Bowser build included in the set, sized up doubly, and it looks really good. Obviously, there are some changes, like the hands are more detailed, as, as are the armbands, but the face is pretty much the same. And yeah, and the feature is you have a pair of platforms where if you just bash Mario down, you'll knock the arms out of the way, revealing a couple of special blocks. On the left, you have the all-important extra time block, and on the right, you have a mystery box. Now, for the main play feature, this is the Bowser's Castle boss battle. So what you can do is you can place Mario on that stickered platform with the red walkway leading up to it in the gear, and the idea is that this is it takes inspiration from the very first Mario game, where what you have to do to win is knock down the bridge to defeat Bowser. So what you do here is you have that red piece, which as you spin it, will knock up all the different tiles on the bridge. So the idea is to have Bowser standing there, and you can use that to knock him over, and then Mario can jump on his shell in order to beat the boss and get all sorts of coinage. So yeah, in my opinion, this is a fantastic looking set, with some fantastic characters, um, maybe a tiny bit small for a hundred bucks, but it does come with over 1,000 pieces, so yeah, it works. Very excited to get this one. Again, especially Bowser and that Bowser statue in the back, as well as the gates up front. Like, yeah, this is a really good set. It looks very fun. And, yeah. Yeah, just very good set. Very excited to get it. Moving on to our first of two retail exclusives. Here we have the Thwomp Drop. 
So number 71376. This will include 393 pieces and cost about 40 bucks. And it will include three characters, those being the exclusive Thwomp, as well as a pair of Potabos. And yeah, the build of this one I think leaves a little bit to be desired. You can see that the main feature is, of course, that you have Thwomp up at the top, and you have a big, big tower that you can just drop him from to squish Mario, except I don't know how well he'd do at actually knocking Mario down, since he's not really coming from the side, he's just coming straight down. So, like, maybe if he caught Mario at a funny angle, but if this man hit Mario straight on, I don't think Lego Mario would even flinch. But you have the bone platform, which goes back and forth. I imagine this will be the same thing with all sorts of sets, where you move them back and forth and you'll get coins. You have one section that's studded and one that's not. Again, the not studded, the tiled section will give you more coins at the expense of more danger. Yeah, one of the potabos is on a launcher. Again, no idea why you'd want to launch something at Mario. Unless the idea with this and the Bowser set is that you have someone else like controlling the enemies to try and work against Mario, but then again, then it's weird that it's only with these two potabos in only these two sets. But yeah, overall, this is a set that I am less excited for. But it's still a nice one. I like Thwomp. I just feel as though Thwomp to me has always been a very similar character to Womp, and I feel as though of the two. Womp comes in a better value set, and I like his figure more, so I don't know. I feel as though I probably would have had a better opinion on this set if maybe they'd saved it for a future wave. But coming out right now, I just don't have a whole lot of interest in this set. It's cool, just not for me at the moment. Our other retail exclusive is a bit of a more interesting take. It is set number 71377, King Boo and the Haunted Yard. It includes 431 pieces and will retail for about $50, and out of all of the standard boxed sets, this one actually has the highest number of included characters, that being 7, as you get, of course, the exclusive King Boo, 4 exclusive Bats, which I know have an official name, but I can't think of it. Sorry about that. And you also get a pair of exclusive Very Angry Goombas. So that's really good. Obviously, I think the reason this set's able to have more characters than most, even with the special Goombas, is because it's a retail exclusive, and those generally get higher budgets. But anyway, this set looks very fun. It has a very spooky vibe. Sort of like what Hidden Side had in its first wave before it kind of goofed up a little. But anyway, so King Boo is interesting because he's on a sort of track where I think the idea is that as you spin the bats, he'll be able to rise up or lower down depending on which way you spin them. And the bats themselves are very cute designs. They each have a tile on the back, and I imagine that it'll be, you just jump on them and you'll get one coin each time. Same system as the Cheap Cheeps from the Toad set. The Goombas are each just standing out front, and I don't know why they're here, but I appreciate them. And then for the main build, you have a sort of like mausoleum type area is where King Boo and the Bats are. Off to the side, you have a couple of relatively small steeples, which just add to the decor. And you have a dead tree, which you can knock over to reveal a sticker tile, although I don't know which one. And yeah, that's really all there is to say with the set aside from that. This set is the only way to get all of those great dark orange and brown base pieces. So if you want those, this is the set to go for. And yeah, this is a very cool set. Not sure if I'll pick it up because similar to the... Boo in the Bowser's Castle set. King Boo, who's supposed to be the main draw of this set, I think is by far the worst part, because he's a cube. He looks like a ghast with a more with a more cartoony face. What, like, with the Boo, at least I can kind of understand it, since he's small, and doing round things at a 3x3 size can be difficult, but... 
Like, this is six by six. They could have very easily done something just rounder. Like, I don't know why he's just... He's just a cube with arms and a little crown. Like, it's not terrible, but... I think they definitely could have done a much better job with King Boo. But the bats are really great. The build is really great. Yeah. I'll probably get this one. And moving away from the retail sets... We move on to this one, Monty Mole and Super Mushroom. Set number 40414, 163 pieces, and if you couldn't tell by that wacky set number, this is a promotional set. Specifically, this is the pre-order bonus if you pre-order the starter course from LEGO.com. And I think this is actually a really great set for a pre-order bonus. Like, they could have easily charged 20 bucks for this set, and... I mean, I probably would have gotten it, um, I, although maybe I would have been a bit more indecisive since it comes with Monty Mole, who comes in another $20 desert-based set, and in general, this set, just looking at it, this set almost feels like an alternate take on the Pokey set, where they wanted to have some fun gimmick-based desert set with Monty Mole, they came up with the two ideas, that desert Pokey won out and got made into a full set, and this one became a promotion. That could be what happened, maybe not, but that's that's just how I feel about this, because this feels very in-depth, like it could have been an actual set. And you actually get more game interactivity with this one, since you get the Monty Mole, you get a Super Mushroom, you get the Pow Block, and you get a special print that goes on the side of the Stone Eye Golem where I, I imagine you just jump on that and get a coin, and if you can't tell, the play feature with this is that you jump on the POW block to knock that over, and when you knock that over, it will fall onto the lever for the Monty Mole hole, and it'll just catapult the Monty Mole out. Yeah, there isn't that much to see with this set, but I think it's very well done. I really like the gameplay aspect. This is definitely actually one of the more play-oriented sets, because again, you just smash down on the POW block and cause all sorts of destruction, which I love. I do plan on pre-ordering the starter pack, so I will be getting this set, and I'm very glad that they decided to include this as a pre-order bonus, rather than something more mundane or nothing at all. Next up, we have the Poly Bag, set number 30385, the Super Mushroom Surprise. I believe some non-lego.com sites are offering this as a pre-order bonus if you order from them. But this set should also just be released normally for $5 in the US. There's nothing unique here, it's just a small platform with a super mushroom and a question mark block. So, nothing super new or exclusive, but it is just nice to get an extra copy of those and... In general, this is good because if you because it's just like a very quick and easy way to expand your course a little bit because it comes with one or since you do get two bases, potentially even two extra spots depending on how you want to build this up. So you could split apart the water and the and the land and just have it be two platforms. So yeah, plus you get the two gameplay elements. Uh, this would be a pretty fun set to have for course expansion. I'll probably pick at least one of these up and. Yeah, there is not much else to say, just a fun expansion to get, and a smart one. Moving on to the things that I'm least interested in from this line, we have the power-up packs. Starting with Fire Mario. Uh, all these are is you get a set of overalls, a new hat, and a very small amount of terrain, and they're $10 each for like 10 to 13 pieces each. This one's 11, and of the four, it's probably my favorite in terms of the aesthetic, because I really like how the Fire Mario looks. Specifically, I think it's cool because he actually has his design with the red shirt and white overalls, and while that is just because he has the red shirt is color-locked because it's part of the course, they had to go with white overalls, I really like it since that harkens back to the original game for NES where Fire Mario did have white overalls instead of the red he has now. So that's cool. Um, 
I feel so this set is the worst value, though, since all of the other ones have a special mold for the cap, while this one is just the standard piece in white. And uh, the terrain is very simple. Um, I think the thing that I think is really missing from these sets is the power-up itself, because you get the outfit change from Mario puts it on, but you don't get the item... The item, like in this case, the Fire Flower, which I think is a very iconic item in the Mario series, harkening back all the way back to 1985, but they just completely and utterly skipped it, which is very unfortunate in my opinion. And if you snap Mario into this power-up, he will gain the ability to throw fireballs. What that does, I have absolutely no clue. It, it hasn't been explained by LEGO or Nintendo, but I, I guess he can make a fun sound effect. This is what Mario looks like in the suit, and yeah, I really like the look of this on the figure. I just think that they could have helped, done a bit more with the builds. Because, like, seriously, the build... The, like, you just get two small sections of terrain, and, like, you get that... You could have included, like, the power-up, or maybe even, like, an actual little section of anything to go with this. But for ten bucks, I really don't think this is worth it. Yeah, and that goes for all of these. Next up, we have Propeller Mario from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. You have the overalls, where you have, this time they are a bit more interesting, since you have the white stripe printed on. And these are red overalls. You have the hat, which is a special mold that you can attach a propeller into, and then aside from that, you just get sand and a flower. And this one, I think, is even less excusable, because at least with a fire flower in that set, you I can't really think of a way to do that using existing pieces, so that probably would have required a new mold. Here, though, you could have just used the standard mushroom piece, except changed up the colors, and added a build for a propeller on top instead of having the stickered tile. But, yeah, this is what he looks like. The idea is you can just shake him around and fly him around and he'll get free coins. Which kind of sounds like cheating, but I don't know. Next up, we have my favorite, and one that I might get, just because I have... just because Mario 3D World is one of my favorite games in the series... Although that just goes to the fact that it was I ha I got it for the Wii U and my Wii U came with a broken gyroscope and this was one of the few games I had that didn't require the gyroscope. So yeah, this much like the propeller suit is inaccurate because with that set he should have a helmet. With this one it should be like a hood, but in both of them it's just a hat because they have to have it sit on top of his head. And yeah, I like the printing for the cat suit and. This one is the only one to have back printing, where he has a tail. And, yeah, this is perfectly fine. But again, they should have included a build for the bell. This is what Mario looks like when he's climbing the wall. He's cute, and yeah, the ability is that you can have him climb walls and get coins. That one feels less like cheating, but there still isn't a whole lot of... Stuff you can do, because these sets aren't really designed for vertical movement, so that will be less for the actual sets and more just for having him climb up your wall, as you can see here. So not something super useful, but it's cute. Last set, and probably my least favorite power-up, is 71373 Builder Mario. This has the least pieces with 10... It's the most recent, being based off of the marketing for Super Mario Maker. And much like the Fire Flower, due to the red torso being color-locked, this one has the shirt and overalls swapped with orange overalls. Well, you could see it as yellow. It, it's the, uh, it's like the flame yellowish-orange color, and, uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't really like the look of this one. Um, the gray base is just extremely generic looking and doesn't have any purpose in game, which is also kind of a weird thing, because, like, the Cat Mario gets grass, the Fire Mario gets lava, the 
propeller already gets sand. You'd think that this one would get water, so you get so at least each one gets a gets one of the terrain bases, but this one is just generic. So that's unfortunate. Um Yeah. Yeah. I, this one also, there isn't a power up they could have included with it. Or at least nothing that actually since this isn't a power up suit from the games. Although I think they could have included like the Donkey Kong hammer as an accessory instead in place of a power up. But they didn't do that, and yeah, the whole thing with this is you just raise him up into the air and slam him down so we can do a ground pound, and that'll net you some coins. Again, seems like cheating since you could just slam him up and down as much as you want and get a stupid amount of coins, but whatever. Last thing, blind bag series. There are 10 characters to collect, set number 71361. Every set will be 23 pieces, and... Yeah, let's go through all of these individually. Starting in the top left, we have the Fuzzy from Super Mario Galaxy. And this is one of my favorites. I really like all the designs on the, the outside of him with the printed face and then all these spikes. Very accurate to how he appears in the games. Interestingly, the Fuzzy is on a stand that can be hinged down. I imagine so that you can hit him on the back. And then you just have some nice terrain builds off to the side for some small Mario-esque hills. Which is something I like about all of these. All of these come with nice terrain. Next we have the bob who is the least interesting of all of these, since that is the same figure that comes in the Guarded Fortress. Which is unfortunate. I feel as though they sh easily could have gone with the red bob Or even a black bob But they just went with the same one that already exists, and that's just a little lame. You do also get one of the less interesting terrain builds, in my opinion, but it's still fine, just my least favorite due to the unoriginality. Next up, we have a very classic Mario enemy, which is the Spiny. It has the spiky style of shell that also comes with Bowser Jr. A couple of trees in the background, printed feet, and what's funny about this guy is that it, he's like most of the others where you jump on his shell and you get a coin, but... That doesn't make sense, since the whole point of Spinies in the original Mario were that they were the enemies thrown by Lakitu, where you couldn't jump on them because they are, they're Spiny, they hurt you. And that is another thing where I wish they'd done these a bit smaller, because there really isn't a way you could have a Lakitu scaled to his Spinies. But, yeah, this is another fine one. Next up, we have probably my favorite, which is the blooper, because that looks almost printed out from the game, aside from these studs, of course, but the face is perfect. Hate these guys in the first Mario, so it'll be great to get some. He comes with some less Mario-esque elements, actually. He gets a coral element from LEGO City, as well as just a rather generic plant. Yeah, nothing really to see here with or with the build, just a very nice enemy itself. Next, we have the Eep Cheap, not to be confused with the Cheap Cheap, it's just the Cheap Cheap, but orange. Same build. Again, the underwater segments are kind of underwhelming for the terrain. My favorite of those goes with our next figure in the bottom left, which is the Puffer. It is a Puffer Fish, and it works very well at that with all the spiky bits, and the pufferfish-like mouth. It is on a water spout, using a gear piece and some transparent cylinders, which look very nice. And I like the color scheme of the undersea flora. Next up, we have the bullet bill, which is a bit blockier than one might think, but I think this looks a lot better than the bonsai bills. He has technic arm pieces, and he comes with a cactus, as well as a clear stand, so he can be flying, of course. Next to that, we have another classic enemy from the first game, a Buzzy Beetle, which has an exceptionally evil face. And in the back, you have some black hills, I guess. I don't really know what's going on there. Next to that, you have the Pipa, which is a sort of baby ghost. Of all these enemies, these are the... The Peepa is the only one that I am not at all familiar with, but I imagine it's from more recent titles. The face is cute, but the terrain is my least favorite since it's just more 
bricks for Bowser's Castle that you can't really fit Mario on there. And uh, the build itself is just not that interesting. Last and uh, not least, we have the Paragoomba, which has a small desert-themed pyramid base. It's flying up on a cloud, and it's just a Goomba with the cheap, cheap wings at the back. And a special face print, which is cool, but I think if we're going to get a Goomba, it's sort of like the Babam, where I'd prefer to get a variant. Aside from this, because this has a new face in the wings, but like a color variant. And specifically, I'd like to get it like a, a an underground Goomba, since in Mario games, in the underground-based levels... The lighting is different, and the Goombas actually appear in a dark blue color, so I think getting a blue Goomba to go for that theming would have been really cool, but since this is only Collectible Characters Series 1, there's always a chance of a cool dark variant like that in the future. And there are chances for all sorts of other characters, both in these blind bags and the mainline sets. And overall, I think that this line is just incredible. They've done so many things, so many new parts, so much ingenuity. Um, if I had to pick my favorites, there is there are the Guarded Fortress, Yoshi's House, or well, Mario's House and Yoshi, rather, and the Bowser's Castle. Those three sets are all incredible, but there's also, of course, the Toad's Treasure Hunt. You have the Whomp, you have the Desert Pokey, just so many great sets from this new Mario series, and I am very excited to see how it expands from here. So let's take a bit to talk about that. So for this buildable core system, what things could LEGO do that are missing? Starting with the most obvious things, uh, Princess Peach does not appear in any of these sets, and I am... Rather surprised. You'd think they would have thrown her in Bowser's castle, but no. So, I think there's a good shot that the princess will come in a set at some point. Um, as for characters like Luigi, though, I don't think his chances are as hot, since most people want Luigi to be a playable figure like Mario, and I don't see LEGO releasing a second starter pack just to give us our green bro. Um, also, some other notable characters are the Koopalings. We have Bowser Jr., but we don't have any of the seven Mario 3 K Koopa kids. And I feel as though both the princess and at least some of the Koopa kids could come with the a set that I think is definitely my most wanted set for them to do in a second wave, which is an airship. And I think that one would... I'm not sure how they would integrate that into the modular course system, but... I think it would be cool if they would try, and so I would love to get an airship. Also, it would have to be fairly large to accommodate Mario, but they could also just keep a fairly blank deck. But yeah, do a set like that. Include, like, say, like, two of the Koopa Kids, Princess Peach, and a Bullet Bill Launcher, and that would be a pretty great set as a more expensive item. But other than that, um... They're all, of course, like Toad variants, like Blue Toad, Yellow Toad, Toadsworth, that you could get in sets. Um, a character that I doubt they do because he is very niche, and that he's only appeared in a couple of the RPGs, but I would personally love to get him as um, Fawful from the Mario and Luigi series, since, again, I have just so much nostalgia for those old RPGs on the GBA and DS. Doubt they'll do him, since he is both kind of obscure and also a darker villain as Mario games go. Like, he was actually kind of objectively evil, as opposed to Bowser, who's more of a very cartoony villain. But I would love to get Fawful or really anything from the Mario and Luigi games. Um, Oh, um, these sets only include green Koopa Troopas, and it would be great to get a red variant. Uh, Birdo would be great to get, but... I'm really just spitballing at this point and naming every single thing I want. Like, I think that of everything I just named, the only things that I think are, like, really important to get are Peach, at least some of the Koopalings, and also, uh, that's honestly it. The airship, I guess, but that's a set, and I really hope we do get an airship, but my, again, kind of doubt it since there isn't a good way to incorporate it. Anyway, let's talk about what everyone's really excited about with this new theme. 
the potential for minifigures. And uh, do I think we're going to get minifigures at some point? Absolutely. Do I think it's going to be anytime soon? Maybe. Basically, I think what LEGO's going to do is the first time we'll have minifigures will be a direct-to-consumer styled set of Peach's Castle. So, like, 200 or 250 bucks. It'll be based on Mario 64, super accurate, very detailed, and it will include just, like, a few figures to give you a taste. Include, like, Mario, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, Toadsworth, and then just, like, a normal Toad. And sell that, get people all hyped up, and then whether that comes out this fall or next year or something, and then, like, this, the release wave after that put out a couple of minifigure scale sets to go along with this core system. So I think this core system is much more interesting, much more fun. It's what I'm mostly in focused on, but I think minifigure sets would work best for two things. Number one, display sets like the Peach's Castle, or if they want to base something off of a specific game and want it to be super accurate. Say, for example, the, the, cat, the hat ship from Super Mario Odyssey. It probably has an official name, but I'm sorry I don't own a Switch. Planning on getting one sooner or later, but don't have it yet, so I haven't played the game. But, for example, if they do something like that, they would probably have to do that at minifigure scale. And also, obviously, if they do stuff like Mario Kart, like a Mario Kart set would have to be in minifigure scale. But overall, I think I've exhausted everything I can possibly say about LEGO Mario for the time being. Very excited for these sets to come out. Very excited to see what LEGO does in the future. But for now, this is Retro Brick Reviews, signing off.